Kidney tissue can be found on this slide. Stain is hematoxylinosin. The presented pathology is hydropic degeneration of the kidney. Hydropic degeneration is an intracellular proteinous degeneration and it results from changes in physical and chemical properties of intracellular proteins which finally lead to cell liquefaction or colliquation. As a result of this, an excessive amount of water runs into the cell where it is accumulated in the form of vacuoles. On this slide we can see glomeruli, which are almost unaffected, and they are surrounded by the renal tubules. Mainly, in case of hydropic degeneration, proximal tubules are affected. At high magnification, we can see the epithelial cells of proximal tubules increase in size. Their cytoplasm is vacuolated and somewhat cleared. The lumen of tubules is narrowed. Some epithelial cells have no nuclei, which is an evidence of necrobiotic changes present in epithelial lining. The described degeneration can lead to irreversible changes such as focal and then total cellular colliquation or liquefaction necrosis. Severe level of hydropic degeneration is known as balloon degeneration. On this slide, we can see a portion of the liver. Stain is hematoxylinosin. Name of the slide is fatty degeneration of the liver. Even at low magnification, we can see that the general microscopical structure of the liver is not typical. There are changes in the structure of hepatic lobules. Also, we can see that the hepatic cells, called hepatocytes, are seriously degenerated. This is an intracellular fatty degeneration. The infiltration and transformation mechanisms are predominant in this degeneration. The neutral fats, or triglycerides, are accumulated in cellular cytoplasm in the form of transparent vacuoles, which can be of different size. Inside the hepatocytes, we can see a large fatty vacuoles. The lipid vacuole occupy the entire cytoplasm of hepatocyte and the nucleus is shifted to the peripheral part of the cell. The hepatocytes in time undergo necrosis. The possible outcome of fatty degeneration of liver is a severe and progressing hepatic failure. Also, some special stains can be used for identification of the lipid deposits. And these stains are, for example, Sudan 3 or Sudan 4. On this slide, we can see a histological section of the kidney. Name of the slide is amyloidosis of the kidney. Generally, amyloidosis is a protein stromavascular or extracellular degeneration which is characterized by the pathological accumulation of the fibrillar protein known as amyloid. And this pathological protein, amyloid, is accumulated in the stromavascular components of the different organs, including kidney. The main mechanism for this degeneration is perverted synthesis, because amyloid is a pathological protein. And you can see that slide has a very, very specific stain which is used to reveal the amyloid deposits known as a congruent stain. Generally at the low magnification, on a general pale background of the kidney tissue, we can see pinkish or reddish fossae or masses, which is exactly accumulation of amyloid. And we can know that the amyloid deposits are located in the tissue of the kidney in some 
particular portions, mainly in the stroma and the vessels. In particular, red-colored homogeneous masses are found in the glomeruli, as well as in the walls of the small vessels, mainly afferent and efferent arterioles. As we can see in this slide, the amyloid deposits cannot be found in parenchymal component of the kidney, exactly in the tubular epithelium. On this slide, we can see a part of the heart exactly in myocardium. Stain is hematoxylinosin, and name on this slide is the obesity of the heart. Obesity of the heart is a stroma vascular or extracellular mesenchymal fatty degeneration. And general obesity is characterized by the excessive fat accumulation in the form of adipose tissue in subcutaneous layer of the skin, as well as in stroma of different organs. At high magnification, we can see bundles of cardiomyocytes. We can see nuclei and the cytoplasm of the cardiomyocytes, as well as striation of cardiomyocytes. At the same time, we can observe that cardiomyocytes are disconnected from each other by the adipose tissue growing in between the muscular bundles. And the fat tissue is presented by adipocytes with a transparent cytoplasm. The most prominent changes in adipose tissue can be seen under the epicardium, so externally on the wall of the heart. The adipose tissue compresses cardiomyocytes and microcircular bed, which causes dystrophic changes in myocardium, resulting in myocardial atrophy and cardiac insufficiency or heart failure. On this slide, we can see a histological section of the uterus. Stain is hematoxylinosine. And the name of this slide is a petrification of the uterine arteries. Petrification or calcification or calcinosis is a mixed degeneration associated with excessive deposition of calcium salts. And there are three types of calcification, which is metastatic calcification, dystrophic calcification, and finally metabolic calcification. At high magnification, within the wall of uterine arteries, we can see a fossa of carcinosis. Should be noted that the calcium salts deposits are highly sensitive to alkaline stains, so they are staining deep blue color at standard staining with hematoxylene. Also, if necessary, some special stains may be used for calcium salts. Due to specific localization of fossa of calcification or petrification, which is in the wall of the uterine arteries, this calcification most likely occurred in metastatic way, means that is calcification due to increased level of calcium in the blood. Also, it should be noted that the calcification is an irreversible process, and in time, the force of calcification may undergo ossification, means transformation into the bony tissue. On this slide, we can see a histological section of the skin. Staining method is hematoxylin and eosine. Name of the slide is a skin in gout. At low magnification, we can see layers of the skin, which is epidermis layer, then the dermis layer, including papillary layer and the reticular layer, as well as skin appendages.
Gout is an example of mixed degeneration associated with a nuclear proteids metabolism disorder with the accumulation in particular the purine substances, purine bases, resulting in a uric acid source deposition in the tissues, mostly in the gout, skin, joints, and kidneys are affected. So on this slide, within the dermis, we can see the position of uric acid salts and those deposits have a basophilic light blue homogeneous appearance or chalk stone formations. Such formations known as a tophus. Also, around those accumulation areas, we can find foreign body gene cells and fibrous tissue surrounding the deposits of the ureids. On this slide, we can see a histological section of the kidney. Stain is hematoxylin adenosine. Name of the slide is ischemic infarction with hemorrhagic hala in the kidney. Generally, infarction is a type of vascular necrosis. And there are three forms of infarction, which are ischemic, also called as a white infarction, hemorrhagic, also known as red infarction, and ischemic infarction with a hemorrhagic hollow, which is presented on this slide. At low magnification, three zones or three layers of infarction can be identified. The first zone is ischemic zone of ischemic necrosis. Then the second zone is a zone of demarcation inflammation. And finally, the third zone is a zone of hemorrhages which re represents the gross appearance of hemorrhagic hollow. At high magnification, in the zone of ischemic necrosis, we can observe morphological features of cellular necrosis both in the glomeruli and in tubules. These changes are cardiopycnosis, then the chirorexis, and finally chirolysis. And the similar changes can be seen in cytoplasm. In other words, mainly cells have no nuclei, as those nuclei were dissolved or lysed. In the second zone, which is zone of demarcation inflammation, also we can find necrobiotic changes of the glomerular and the tubules surrounded with the numerous neutrophils and this is typical for necrotic changes. Finally, in the third zone, along with necrotic changes, we can find very pronounced hyperemia of microvascular bed lesions of the vessels with hemorrhages into the surrounding tissues. Generally, the described pathology may have both favorable and unfavorable outcomes. And growth of the connective tissue at the site of necrosis, which is organization, is considered as a most favorable outcome of infarction of the kidney. On this slide, we can see one more histological section of the kidney. Stain is the same, hematoxylin and nosine, and name of the slide is necrotic nephrosis. In this slide, we can see in another type of necrosis, and it is generally caused by any toxic influence on the epithelium on the renal tubules. At high magnification, we can see the renal glomeruli surrounded with the tubules.
The proximal convoluted tubules mainly have the appearance of homogeneous eosinophilic masses with a narrowed lumen of the tubules. And there are no nuclei in the majority of the epithelial cells, means chiralysis happens. So, no nuclei results from chiralysis, which is an evidence of necrosis. It should be noted that we can see damage of the tubules, but not the glomeruli, as the cause of necrosis is not an ischemia, but selective action of some toxic substances, exactly on the epithelium of the proximal tubules. On this slide, we can see a transverse section of the skeletal muscle. Stain is hematoxylinosine, and name of this slide is the Zenkers of axi necrosis of the muscles. Zenker necrosis of axi necrosis is a specific type of coagulation necrosis caused by toxic agents. It occurs only in skeletal muscles, mainly of interior abdominal wall or muscles of the thigh, under some severe infectious disease such as typhoid fever or cholera. At high magnification, we can find muscle cells which mostly do not have nuclei as a result of chiralysis and have lost cross-striation. Also it should be noted that the necrotized muscle cells are surrounded by a great number of neutrophils which is an area of demarcation inflammation which is typical for necrotic changes. So around the dead myocytes we can see a lot of neutrophils.